Alrighty, alrighty, ladies and gents. Let's see, let's see. Hmm. Let's see. Alrighty, alrighty, we are live. We had some technical delays, but we are live. I got a couple of people in the house. Yo, let me know where you guys are at. Let me know where you guys are at. What part of the city you in? You're in New York. Let me know what city you in. But listen, yo, I'm really excited. <clears throat> As you know, I, I recently started um, blog. I recently started going live on YouTube. I just feel like there's so much experiences and, and, and particular experiences that I've been through that I feel can be very valuable and helpful to people. And um, <clears throat> I'm really excited just to be doing this. And listen, one of the reasons why I'm going live is really because I've been in the music business for, for quite some time now in, in a very particular city, in a very great city, which is the city of New York, born and raised out here, right? But one of the um, reasons why I wanted to go live is because I've been privileged to be a part of the music business, but be a part of the music business in a very awesome city like New York City. And one of the great things about being in New York City is that you get to meet some of the top, top-notch talent and work with, uh, along, alongside with some great, great talent um, some uh, world-renowned musicians, artists, and those experiences, I wanted to bring it to the world. And the best way I found I can do that um, from the crib is to go live. And this is why we're doing that. And But the main reason is just really to provide value to as much people as we can, to many musicians um, that we can. Because I realize that there's so many musicians out there, um, whether it be playing in church, whether it be playing in a live setting, whether wherever they're trying to get work and do their thing with music. Um, there's so many people trying to do it. And I was like, yo, I know so much talent. Why don't we just bring um, this talent to, to, to the world? Why don't we just uh, uh, put on this platform of the world? And YouTube is the best way to do that. But um, <clears throat> I see I got Jonathan Artero. What up, Jonathan? Javi Silvani. What's good, my dudes? I see a couple of heads in the house, but yeah, it, some some of the dudes I'm talking that are in the comment are like some some of the people that I want on on this podcast on this live show. Why? Because there's so much talent. I just want to bring that to the world. And you know, I've talked to so many people, um, and people are like, "Yo, why don't you just you know you should do courses and stuff." I'm like, "I'm not gonna do no courses. I want to go live on YouTube and just bring this, yo." So again, this is not really about me. It's more about just the people and the the surroundings that I've been around for so many years as to why I want to do this. So. <clears throat> That being said, if you are gonna, at the end of this, if you are digging the value and the content that we're providing, um, just hit the like, hit it a like and the subscribe, what it does, it helps the algorithm. There you go. Got the little handle right there, like, subscribe. And what that does, it helps the algorithm so that YouTube can push it. So do that. And another way you can do it is uh, you can help us by sharing the link, posting it on Instagram, posting it on Facebook, and you know, just start building the community around us because ultimately at the end of the day, people's gonna benefit is, the musicians community um and that's that's kind of what we're doing here but anyway that being said let's jump right in <clears throat> i am really excited to have one of my homies one of my bros i know this dude for a long time um and um he's extremely talented he's involved in different parts of the music business and um i was like yo we've been working together for the last couple of months and i was like yo we we always have great conversations and i was like we got it we got it we got to do it live man because you know certain things i know certain things and um, we can provide this to the to the musician community. We have my boy Danny D is in the house. Yo, let's bring him in. Yo, Danny, you in the cup, bro? What up, everybody? What's good? What's good? What's good? <laughs> what's good, bro? How you doing, man? I'm good, man. Thanks, man. Thank you for having me. Um, you are too kind with your words. Uh, <laughs> Not at all, bro. I never say that I know it all, and I really don't, but whatever that I know, I will gladly share it. <laughs> Absolutely, man. I don't think any of us really, at the end of the day, um, really know everything, you know? And that's part of why we're, we're doing this, is because at the end of the day, man, like, I like to read books, right? And <clears throat> sometimes there's so much information that it could be overwhelming, but sometimes it's just like that one little thing that you can get out of a book, right? And that's how I see this. If you're able to get one nugget, it might not be all the things you need for your entire music career. It might not be something that's going to open hundreds of doors, but, you know, it's it's baby steps. That's what it's about. It's about taking those baby steps. I definitely don't know it all. You definitely don't know it all. And that's why we're coming together, you know, um, just to provide value. And, and, more, and more importantly, the best way to learn is by other people's experiences, right? 
and I, I, I love that. That that is so important um, to talk about those things because one thing, and you know, we were talking about this the other day, not to go too deep into it, but um, sometimes there's like gatekeepers of the business, right? Like, or people act like gatekeepers, and it's like, yo, that's kind of whack because it's like if we are able to share experiences with one another and talk about it, like. The, the knowledge will be we'll, we'll, the knowledge will be spreading, but we'll also be able to help one another. And that's the whole goal, man. But that being said, bro, I know a lot about you, bro. But the whole thing is that people let, uh, to let the people know about you, the people that are watching. But if you don't mind, bro, just tell me a little bit about your background, how you got started playing music and what you're up to these days and what you're doing. Okay. I, uh, I, I picked up the bass probably around the age of 17, maybe close to 16, 17, 18, which is considered late for a lot of people. There's oh, wow. There's people who pick up at, at that age and, and, you know, kill it, but yeah. you know, technically it's a late start. Um, I found myself surrounded by a lot of amazing musicians. Um, Facts. People that, you know, that hold their own as as an individual, as a musician, and then their resumes and everything. So I found myself surrounded by those people. And to the point that it was almost like inevitable, you know? Um so like 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 I was I was surrounded by all of these musicians. My sister also sings and so it was it was just inevitable, you know, and at one point somebody was like, you know what, you should play the bass. I really? Like, okay, sure. <laughs> like I was like, all right. You know, I like the music, and growing up in church, you know, you always played it, played on the, every instrument here and there. But they were like, oh, you know what? You should play bass. And of course, there was a need in the church that I played at. So I got an initial, you know, a couple lessons from from an amazing teacher, and he taught me what I needed to know. And he was kind of like, go for it, you know. And now it's your turn to. To just dig in, you know, and I love um, it. from there on out, I, I started playing bass, um, playing in different churches, playing worship teams, honestly, and I just, I honestly started from there, and I, I worked my way around, I I was a uptown Manhattan Bronx kid that, you know, started getting calls in Brooklyn, <laughs> and I was like, what is that, you know, like, do I need my passport to get there? <laughs> <laughs> Just because we got you mentioned Brooklyn, Bronx, and Manhattan, we got to throw you in a little DJ horn. <laughs> and, and like, long, long story short, um, I live in Brooklyn now. <laughs> so, um, that, Everyone lives in Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's that's really how I started to play, you know, and meeting everybody and and just keeping a good reputation, man. Like, mm, you know. Mm, mm, mm. Oh. <laughs> That right there is really what helped me get started. You know? Definitely, definitely. So you touched on, um, you said a few things that I want to kind of elaborate on. <clears throat> you said you grew up being around, sur surrounded by many musicians. I, I could relate because I feel like being in New York, grew up with a, growing up in church too, very similar story. There was so many um, musicians that, so many great musicians that came before us that we grew up in. Sometimes just being in that environment of great musicians is, is so key and helpful to, to, to getting your, your, your start with music, right? But then you talked about there was a need in church, right? And that's how you really got started. Talk a little bit about that. Um, well, growing up, I mean, there was, you know, maybe one keyboard player, you know, one drummer, or if there even was a drummer in the church that I grew up in sometimes, and, you know, and- What uh, kind of church was this? I, I grew up in a Spanish Pentecostal church in the Bronx, man. The Bronx I, and the boogie down, okay. Here to my heart, you know, I learned a lot there. And Definitely. It, it helped shape me who I am today. So facts. I uh, that there there was <laughs> there wasn't a lot of people, you know, and and so there was a need. There was a need for bass, and I don't even think I even knew exactly what the bass was or what it did, you know, when that happened. Yeah. And that's really where where I really started. Dope, dope. So listen up, musicians who are trying to get a start <clears throat> and who are trying to just, you know, start wherever you are. It's so important to see the needs that are around you, the needs that are around you and fulfill it. Someone has to fulfill that need. And in essence, if you start studying what business is 
and how businesses get started is because they see a need and someone needs to fulfill that need. So what Danny's talking about is like you see some uh, you see you going to church, let's say churches, especially small churches on the come up startup churches or church plants. You see a need. Most of them need help with music. You can get a great start playing in church. Don't not underestimate church uh, musicians who are on the come up. You know, they'll give you that platform to, yeah. to grow it, you know, and to, to, to find your way and to mess up. And, and, and also just be grateful for the people who helped you along the way. Like, not, the church gives you the platform, but there's also people who inspire you and who, who help you create that. And there are people in my life that I still hold that very dear. This Definitely. Was, you know, 12 years ago. Okay. I love it. I love it. Quick question. <clears throat> um, so you talked about church, right? But is that the only thing you do? Uh, no. Oh, yeah. So you asked how I started and then where I am now. Okay. Um, so, I, I, again, I started in church. I'm still in church. Uh, nothing will ever take me away from that. I love um, it. But uh, I have been fortunate enough to play outside. You know, in, in the in el mundo. In the, in, 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 in la <laughs> um, but uh, so again, my roots and everything has helped me. You know, again, playing in church. But I also now find myself um, now. Well, before I go into that, um, I still currently play in church. You know, I am the uh, productions and service uh, services director at uh, Sela City Church in Bushwick, in Brooklyn. Uh, you know, I do... Um, yeah. Shout out to Sela City Church. There, you know? um, okay. How long uh, you been with them? I'm sorry? How long you been with them? I've been with them two years now, maybe going on three. Okay. okay. Um, and it's been a blessing. It's been, it's been amazing. And... Um, you know, I served there, and and, and I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Um, but I do also play outside of the church in the uh, secular world. Um, a big portion of what I do um, is in the, like, corporate uh, agencies and the wedding agencies and that scene. Um, okay. And I, I honestly do love it. Um, it has helped me tremendously as a player. Um, okay. Being able to play in those in that environment in the corporate and the I guess you can say like the professional world of the, all of that it, it it's a it's a different breed you know church has its own style and its own everything which is amazing and, and there's nothing like it it's the same thing in, in the corporate world you know playing okay. these weddings you know you really you really get to dig in into different genres different styles different everything. Mm. I, when I started and I really had to start to dig into that part, I had to spend hours just shedding um, mm. because it, it's a lot of material. It's a different genre. It's a, what does my tone, how do, how do I make this work? How can I jump from a jazz tune to a pop tune, you know, in a matter yeah. of seconds? Yeah. Um, and that helped just my, my playing and my musicality overall just skyrocket. Um, so those are the two main things, you know, there, there are, artist gigs here and there that I do take. Um, but my, with my schedule and everything, you know, I, I try to take what I can. A busy man. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, you know, you. ah, no, nah, man, <laughs> you funny. <laughs> Yo, listen, you talking about like you're in two different worlds cause you are doing the, 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 the church stuff and then you're doing the, 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 the corporate, um, wedding scene, corporate party scene, right. With, with the agency and all that. Um, so, you know, you talked about like when you started doing the corporate stuff, the more, uh, I guess if you want to call it more professional um, corporate agency stuff, wedding stuff, you, you had to like kind of re, not relearn, but like dig a little bit more into your instrument, shed a little bit more with the language you use and kind of learn how to jump from one tune to another one um, from a yeah. jazz, from a jazz tone, maybe to like a more R&B tone or whatever, and just learn how to adapt to that. Do you feel by any chance that um, church has something to do with being able to prepare you for such a thing like that to be so, um, what do you call it? To be so versatile, right? Does that, do you think church helped you for that or prepared oh, you for, yeah? 100%. I think that, that playing in church alone, um, there's, there's the planning aspect of it, but there is also the spontaneous, uh, 
aspect of worship that happens. And mm. you have to be ready for anything. You have to be ready to listen. You have to be ready to be guided by, let's say, an MD. You know, Fact. you have to be ready to to listen to where everything is going, knowing what to play, knowing your dynamics. You know, there's there's nothing like a, you know, like a, like let's say if you're playing CCM and there's the, the you know, quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteen note builds. You know, yeah. those things help. They'll give you dynamics. Those those those. So I, with all of that, I was able to take that, and it helped me into the yeah. other world that I had to learn. Mm. So just um, kind of. You were kind of prepared by the church in a way to to be ready for whatever. That's a very similar story to me. Very interesting. Yeah. So, if you're, playing different, if you're playing different genres, if you're playing gospel, you know, and you're playing, or you're playing, let's say you're playing a, you know, a bump in a in a gospel church, you know, in a black church, you playing. That's that's gonna help you tremendously with your facts, especially on bass, you know, on everything. You know what I mean? Like that right there alone can help you. And, and take you into your jazz walks, you know, like definitely, you know, those little things where you you, you don't notice, you know, and, it's, and then let's say you grow up playing Spanish songs, you play grow up playing uh, coritos, you know, and then you grow up in the night in church, you're playing a different genre. It's, it's very similar. Yeah, definitely. Similar. So, so let me say this. If, you, if you're tuning in and, and you are getting your start, you're getting your feet wet with um, trying to get exposed to the music business, trying to you know, be, be, be known and get around different settings, different contexts. Playing in church could be a great place. Do not underestimate it. Um, it's kind of what I'm getting out of um, what you're saying. I see a few people that are, are, are with us on the live. Um, guys, if you're watching, just please do me a favor. Hit the like, hit the subscribe. If you haven't, it'll help the algorithm. It'll help you to push the video. Um, and hitting the like helps the algorithm. So let's jump back in. Um, Danny. Yeah. So yeah, man, I love that, bro. I love that you were um, playing in church and, and that kind of helped you. Um, you know, one of the things I like to talk about that I feel is really helpful to people out there, um, and I want to see if I can ask you this, is um, money. I love talking about money. Um, a lot of people know I'm also involved in the financial services industry, and um, I want to help musicians that are on the rise um, learn how they can make money. Um, one of the questions I have for you is, how did you start making money with, 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 with the music business as a musician? Um, all right. Well, this, this could be, in certain places, this could be a little bit of a, of a touchy subject, right? Let's okay. Say, especially growing up in church. And, okay. Uh, you know, saying, you know, like, some places have the funds and some places don't. Um, yeah. I think that starting off, that should be kind of understood, you know, knowing your, your place. But how did I start making money? I started making money at church. Really? I started okay. getting paid from certain churches here and there to go and play, uh, help get people out. You know, I would still be at my church, but maybe after or before or any other times I would go and play and be able to to get paid at a church yeah um you know i don't think for me i don't think it was ever anything that i would really demand of or ask out for but the blessings were there and um for me that that's important and you know like god is always going to provide and if your heart is in the right place then you should be good definitely you know like he's gonna he's everything should fall into place but I started getting paid from playing at different churches. Okay. Um, and then from there on out, then there were, you know, certain little gigs here and there outside, uh, whether it was um, then, uh, you know, whether it was like a small little club gig or a restaurant gig, which then it's a little bit different for me, right? This is for me personally. Um, but there I would, I would say, well, look, you know, my time is valuable, you know, and that, kind of just transcended into getting paid for more gigs. And there are a lot of places and a lot of plenty of churches that understand that as well. You know? Yeah, definitely. We'll pay you for your time and for your value. Absolutely. I love that. <clears throat> yeah, so so how about, so the, the church is saying, like, you know, the reputation within the church market, the church scene, if you want to say it, 
kind of helped you to land gigs in, in, in outside gigs? You want to call them secular environment? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I, and I think that ties in. How to play. Yeah. You know, I give all the credit to that. And, you know, from being out there and seeing different churches, being exposed to different environments and playing and learning, when I had the opportunity to go, go out and play secular, it helped me tremendously. It helped me tremendously. It helped me how to value myself. You know, it helped me how to, it helped me to be responsible and to learn and to just actually play, you know, and know what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, I love so that. That's, that's really when I, how I started. I love that. And then, you know, you, you touched on something earlier and I want to tie that into what we're talking about, which is reputation, right? Mm -hmm. Reputation, rep, reputation is everything in, in, in almost every industry, but I, we're talking about music. So the music yeah. uh, industry is definitely a uh, reputation as a live musician. is so important, meaning being up on time, responsible, and I'm sure that that had something to play into like your success outside uh, of church and playing in a more professional setting, right? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, you know, there's a lot of different sayings. You know, they say that, uh, like, which are which are great. You know, like sayings, like let's say thirty percent is what you play, forty percent is what you play, but everything else is what you do. How you are, how do you act mm. with everybody? What people, most people hold value in what you're doing, right? If you said most people what? Most people value that. Yeah. You know, they, if you're able to do the gig, great. But it, and it, but on top of that, if you're able to show up on time, on time. I'll say it one more time. On time. <laughs> if you're able to show up on time, know what you're playing and be ready and hit it. That people are gonna value that so much more. Hmm. And. That, that right there is, is that's key. Think about it if you're doing an artist gig and you're on tour. Whew. You're going to spend most of your time with those people, more off stage than on stage. And that alone is, you, ha you have to be able to, to hold your own and be, you know, get along with people and, and again, show up at lobby call. They say the time is, yeah you know, responsibility like that. That, that for me being responsible and being personable is is probably over well over more important than playing definitely definitely um <clears throat> I, was, I was gonna ask you something about about that <laughs> i kind of forgot ah, if it comes, you gotta <laughs> oh i remember now um, you talk. You, you said thirty percent was like music, and then the other forty percent, uh, or what was it? The rest is what? The rest is is who you are. Mm, character. So don't quote me, but you know, like. Nah, that's a fact. The if reason. You're able, if you're able to do the gig, man, and you do it great, and you and like music musically, right? That's your thirty percent. But everything else, man, that's so key. If nobody wants to be around you. They're not gonna call you. Yeah, that's a fact. That's that's anywhere. That's anywhere. That's anywhere. Yeah, yeah. You, the reason I, I brought that up is because yo, you, you, you're, you're, I feel like you're being too kind. Because when I was on tour, and the dudes that I was on tour with were some heavy hitters, they would tell me, yo, it's ten percent music, and ninety percent business, Ooh, right? There you go. That's and, 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 where's that gunshot at? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's a fact. Yo, the dudes I was on tour with um, back in 2016, 2015, they'd often tell me, yo, 10% music, 90% show business, right? And I think the reason I'm even repeating that is because I, I feel like you're being too kind, but I want to kind of linger here and touch on this and dig in a little bit more because that's so key, man. Like when you say, um, you know, you said 30% or 40% is music and then the rest is just you, elaborate on that you. What do you mean by that? The responsibility, the character, yeah. what you just said, yeah. is it, does it have to do with some, does some of that have to do with like, um, maybe playing pocket, maybe not overplaying, maybe not making the show about you, uh, the, yeah. the music about you or how you want it to be, but rather how they requested it to, for you to be. Right. Right. Yeah. No, that's, that's, those are gems right there, man. It's to me, it is that it's that character. It's, it's, uh, are you are you social, you know? Do you get along with everybody? 
Mm. It's, it's not to say that, you know, you have to be a pleaser, people pleaser. Be yeah. yourself. But, you know, you if, if you're a smacking musician and, you, and you, you're killing the gig, but if you're a terrible person, nobody's going to call you. Yeah, definitely. You know, and so it is, it is. It all comes down to character. It all comes down to, to how do you conduct yourself? You know, do people always have to look after you? Make sure you're, you're like I said, making sure that you reach a lobby call. You know, that that could be at seven in the morning sometimes. You know, six Ouch. in the morning, Ouch. four in the morning. <laughs> you know, like people have to call you when they say, you know, to make sure they're there. Yeah. Um, no, that's so important. Like that. or, or if they give you a set list. You got to show up ready to hit that set list. You Facts. Know? And that's responsibility. Facts. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, so for me, it is, it is, it's character, it's, um, it's responsibility outside of, of how well you play. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. And you get along with everybody else and get along with others. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Listen, um, we're going to keep going through this interview book. I just want to tell people out there, if you're watching, uh, folks who are in the chat, <clears throat> I appreciate you guys being here, all, all our friends and the people who are supporting. But listen, I, I, at some point, I want to open up to a Q&A. So if you guys have questions, feel free to drop a question right now and we'll come back to it. I'll pull it up on the screen and everything and we can talk on it. If you guys have points you want to touch, I know there's some musicians in the chat right now. Um, if you guys have questions or something we you guys want to hear from us that you guys want to hear our thoughts on or even maybe just bring into the conversation, feel free to drop um, a thought or a question or whatever that is. Jump in. What's that? One last thing, if I could jump in. Yeah, yeah, please. If, if you know, talking from an MD's standpoint, you know, mm -hmm. point of view, you know, your job is to put a band together, let's say, for an artist or your job is to work with a band that's at a church. You know, you're going to make a call for the people who you want to be around. Mm. You know, you're not going to call a person. Just, I wouldn't just call a person just because they're going to nail the gig. Yeah. I want to call a person that I want to work with. I want to call somebody that I could be creative with. That's going to maybe, you know, work together and not just do their own thing. Um, somebody that I could grow with. Absolutely. You know, I would I would want to build my own band with the people that I know that I'm going to love working with and get the job done. Yeah. Definitely. You know, I I think that's that's so important um because you know, I'm a music director too and I'm going to that same mentality you have as a music director, I'm going to use as well. Um and you know, there's so many music directors that I've talked to that are the same thing like think that have that same mindset like I need someone easy going it's not necessarily about who plays the best, but who can play the gig the best, right? right. Those, are, those are two different things. So I totally agree with that. And that's so important because um, as MDs, our jobs can sometimes be so different. And we'll, we'll, we'll jump into that conversation of MDs and all that, right? But um, it could be so different. There's so much maybe pressure at, at some times, which is part, it's part of the nature of, of, of the music business or, or being a music director. Um, there's a lot of pressure and a lot of responsibility on us. So if I, I got this person, let's just say I'm hiring this drummer. Let's just put drummers under the bus right now. No, I'm kidding. But let's just use a drummer as an example. If the drummer is showing up late, not knowing the music, chopping everything up, um, not playing pocket, making it harder for us, right? And I'm, I'm not necessarily talking in church. I'm talking just in general, the overarching like uh, music business. If, if, if that drummer is making it hard for my job. I've constantly got to be on top and tell him, hey, please don't play those chops or please, you know, be responsive. Please show up on time. Please don't flirt with the girl while we're on the gig. Whatever the case may be, right? Then that's making my job harder because then someone might be seeing that. Someone that, like, if in this case, if we're working with an agency, if we're working with a wet, uh, in the wedding business, in the, in, the, in the corporate party, the people who got us the gig, the people who, the, the manager, the, the, the agency is seeing that unprofessionalism, they're going to come to me as a music director, right? And then my, it's like, I have so many other things going on and this person is kind of making my job harder because it's another thing on the list of things I have to do. Yeah. And the last thing we want to do is go and confront that and then talk to that person, kind of pull them to the side. And, and let's be honest, that's uncomfortable at times, right? Not just for myself, but for that person. Not everyone wants to be told what to do, but here's the thing. If you are professional, if you were professional drummer or whoever it is in that case, right? Singer, it could be a singer. If you were professional, 
I, we wouldn't be dealing with this. Just make my life easy by you doing your job. And I promise I'll do my job, you know? So I agree with you because, um, yeah, that, that's something we see a lot. <clears throat> yeah, and at the end of the day, it's one sound. You're not going to sound good. And then that's your name. That's your, that's... Exactly. Your, who put that together? You know, and it's, it's, it, it's important. It is, it is important. That is... Yeah. That's great, Josh. Yeah. Definitely. I, 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 um... Let me see if someone, ha, huh. Javi said top two MDs, people, peeps, and go. <laughs> Shout out to Javi. <clears throat> so, um, let's see. I had a couple of questions. He said, question for you both. Let's see if I can bring this up. How do you bring this up? I don't even know how. Oh, there you go. Okay. You see that? He says, question for you, uh, Marcus Roman. Question for you both. Who were your musical influences growing up? I, I I'll go ahead. What what you think? <clears throat> um, for me, man, it's it's like I feel like there's so many different phases for me of like who was my favorite musician um, when I was growing up because like when I first started music, it was just strictly church musicians, right? And then I started listening to church music. I started like you know back there, you know, we had CDs. Mm -hmm. And you look through the credits and be like, oh, my God, it's like Aaron Lindsay or it's uh, Michael Rodriguez. I don't know if you know Mike Rodriguez. Uh, that's a more of a Spanish. Uh, he's known in the Spanish world. He, um, he, uh, he was the musical director for Jesus Aran Romero, which is a, a Christian yeah. uh, artist. And I would look at those guys and I'm like, yo, these, these are my influences. And then once I started looking at the people that they looked up to, they're looking at different artists or different um like whether it be secular artists or whether it be like famous musicians like the Michel Camilos and stuff like that. I was a big fan of Michel Camilo. Then from there, I started seeing other musicians that, um, that because I would listen to Michel Camilo, then I come across like, um, what's his name? Arturo, what's his name? Spanish guy, uh, pianist, uh, forgot his name. And then the, the, there was another guy named Chucho Valdez. And then from there, it was like the Latin jazz scene. And then from the Latin jazz scene, I kind of went into the, Started listening to the jazz guys, and I was like, yo, these guys are crazy. Just, I started listening to, um, one of my favorite guys was Keith Jarrett at one point, who, who was amazing. But then from there, I also realized, this is just my, I'm just speaking for myself. Um, like, it, it just became a math for a lot of the jazz guys. It just became like a language, and they're just, you know, it's just like vocabulary for them at, the, at, at that point. Um, and then from there, I kind of fell in love with like R&B, pop music. And I started seeing a lot of these famous uh, jazz musicians or well-known, renowned musicians were on gig, gigs with some of these artists, right? Like, um, one, a popular bass player growing up that everyone that I was listening to, uh, everyone that I was working with was listening to was uh, Jaco Pastorius. And I find out Jaco Pastorius is on, is, was on tour with an artist named Joni Mitchell, and then he had a band called Weather Report. And you start seeing all these guys, and it's like, oh, these guys are involved in a lot of different styles of music, right? And then just from there, I kind of realized, um, and I know I'm kind of all over the place with my, with my answer, but from there, I realized, oh, these guys, um, they kind of eventually found their niche, right? They found their, ni their niche and what, what kind of genre they want to establish themselves in, right? And I think that's important, right? And maybe on another show, on another episode, we can talk about this, like finding your niche and stuff like that. Um, and then I realized those guys found their niche and like Jacko is a straight like fusion jazz guy and then some of those guys were just there's other guys are just strictly jazz and then some of those guys like robert glasper has been on tour with so many people like that are not necessarily jazz that were r&b and were like neo soul he was on tour with maxwell um and pff, so many other people he's worked with he's worked with lauren hill so then you realize these guys have a niche and that's kind of what i identified in my experience of like who are, who are my favorite musicians coming up. I had so many. I, at one point, it was Michelle Camilo. Then from there, I was a big Robert Glasper fan. And then lately, I've just been a fan of music. Like, it's not necessarily an artist, but it's maybe a song. It might be, or it could be an artist, but lately, i just kind of been liking, like, songs um, uh, of specific artists. So it's not necessarily an artist at this point. It just, I, I, I kind of like uh, songs and whatever's catching my attention. How about you, Danny? Um, the short answer for your last thing is I've, I'm with you. I've been listening to a lot of different music. Um, I've been listening to a lot of... I've been listening more to the production of things. Um, okay. 
and just tra- appreciating mix a good mix, a good master of a track of a record. Mm, um, facts. For me, that that is probably even more valuable than you know listening to and a, just I don't know like a whole bass solo. You know what I mean? Just for me, like that, for, like a, a good mix and a, that. That's probably the first thing I listen to when I listen to a record. If I have to learn it or if I'm listening to it just for fun, which is important, you know, listen to music for fun. Listen to music to grow, not just for what you got to learn. And I'm, I'm preaching to myself, too. Um, but, yeah, that, definitely. bass tones and things like that um, for that. But as far as growing up, I remember my first CD was one of Dave Weckl's, like, Master Plans CDs. Damn, yeah. throwback. And like I remember just just going back and forth, you know, just just looping all of that. That one CD in my CD player, you know. Like, yeah. Oh, you know, like. <laughs> uh, so for me, that was probably one of the first influences. And then when I started to play, I really dug into the Jocko and and all of his influences and 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 how he was on Pat Metheny's stuff, you know, and and all all of these just different things. And then from there, it was listening to Marcus Miller and in the beginning I listened to a lot of bass players you know the big heavy hitters you know Stanley Clark school days um you know things like that and then from there I honestly find myself listening to a lot of different music I actually barely listen to bass players right now there are facts I still obviously listen to which are my good influences but I listen to a lot of drummers I listen to drum albums um, Mm. good stuff uh it's a little bit weird, you know? If yeah. I, if I'm looking at some reels or something online or on YouTube, I'll be more inclined to look at a different instrument than bass right now. That No, that makes sense. I feel the same way, man. I um, And you touched on something that's so so true. Like, um, there's a lot of Instagram reels that you watch and come across. Where like, oh, there's some phenomenal musicians out there, bro, that are ripping... That there's a kid, man. I forgot his name. He's like 15 years old. Um, I think his name is Justin Schwartz or something like that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Bro, that little dude is ripping like multiple instruments. It's like, yo, these dudes are crazy. They yeah. they just and they're outside of this world, bro. So I, I'm like, I feel the same way. I watch a lot of reels and stuff. I'm like, there's so many musicians that are killing. And I'm the same way as you too. I also like listening to different stuff, like different um, musicians. I like listening to. I love bass players, bro. I love listening to bass players. I like one of one of my favorite drummers right now in the last few years has to be Nate Smith. Not sure if you heard of him. Yeah. Bro, he's just it's just really because he's pocket. And, I, and I, I've actually had the uh, privilege to meet him. Uh, I did a, a show one time, and he was like the opening band. He was with the opening band, and he was so chill. And yo, but his pocket was just phenomenal. I was like, like listening to him live was like a whole other thing. And I like those things, just so many things you could learn from that. Just right. seeing how a bass player blends well and, and, and is locks in with a, a drummer. And he does that so well, so I, I, I'm the same way. We have a couple more questions. Let's see. Uh, another question here that was asked was, um, Jonathan Ortero, how do you guys balance family and music? It's a great question. Want to go for that one, uh, Danny? Yeah. yeah. I'll take a shot at it. <laughs> um, it's... It's... I'll put it like, it's not easy, that's for sure. It's not easy. Um, I actually saw a post today, and it was uh, different, I guess different jobs, right? Different stuff, like a banker, let's say, and a teacher, I don't know, a teacher. Mm-hmm. And it was laying on a bed. It was like a stick figure laying on a bed. One way the stick figure, lay, the, the banker lays on the bed, the one way the stick figure lays on the bed. And then the musician, it was just the pillow. The musician wasn't even there. Yeah. And it just shows like you're always on the go. You're always on the move. You, you never sleep. You know. Yeah. And, um, it's something that I've I'm working now. I'm 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 actually next month will make one year married, and I am applying how to spend more time with family. You know, before it was like I'll take any gig. Music, but music, music. Work. Yeah, I didn't have no worries. I was chilling. Now it's different. And it's not because simply I'm married, but it's because I want to do it. I want to spend time and just chill and take it easy. Yeah. Um, so for me right now, I am finding a balance and I'm finding, I'm 
finding myself saying no to certain things because I want to spend time with my family. So my, okay. my big from that is you definitely should find a healthy balance between your family and your and music. But it, it, it will only come from a healthy place if it's a want and not a necessity. I love it. It's, it, you should want to spend time. You should want to just chill. And it, it shouldn't be that you should be given a hard time. It should never get there. I love it. So that's my take. Real quick. Yeah. My take <clears throat> is, yeah, man, I, I like some of the stuff you were talking about. I think I, I kind of um, have some similarities and similar thoughts to what you were saying. Um, for me, at this point, I'm 32 years old. I'm not that old, right? <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm married and I just had a baby. So for me, um, m the way I'm going to take a gig today is so different from how I took it 10 years ago. And anyone who has a conversation with my friends, some of the people who are in the chat and a lot of my friends know, like if I get called for a tour, bro, I'm most likely not going to take it. I'm saying that now, but you know, if they throw a number at me, I might rethink, but most likely I'm not going to take, I'm not going to take a, 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 a tour gig right now just because I have a family and I can't afford to be away from my family. That's just personal. There's not really a, a, an amount for that. But, um, so again, where I'm at today is completely different from where I was 10 years ago, or even like three, four years ago. Right. I, I've always liked to work a lot. That's just my personality. Right. Um, I, I, I like entrepreneurship, so I always like being active. It's hard for me to, to, to stay still. Um, but today, I'm similar to you. I'm not going to take every gig, right? And I, I get calls for some stuff that I'm just like, I'll be honest, I, I just go for the number first. I feel like I've earned, I've earned that, um, that place to be like, yo, how much is it paying? If it's not paying like a certain rate, I'm going to be like, yeah, I, I don't think I could take it because I also have to factor it. And this is one of the reasons why I don't play with artists today. Um, no, no, nothing to do with personal with work with artists, but it just seems like a lot of work to take on, right? I have to factor in that <clears throat> um, I'm going to be learning a ton of material that I, I probably never even heard because most artists are original writers. They got their own music. So if they're going to be writing their own music, that means I have to learn that entire music. And the way my, my mind works, it takes me a while to internalize certain music. I, I don't have the ability that a lot of musicians have to hear I could hear something once and draw it out, like chart, chart it out, but I don't have the ability to hear it one, two times and be like, yeah, I remember the whole thing. And like, I can play it like I played it. Like I know musicians that I could do that. They, they hear it one time and they can nail that joint. Like they known it for a long time. So that's kind of my, pro I, I, I'm not going to take a gig that's going to require me to learn a lot of, uh, spend a lot of time learning the material and then have mad rehearsals. And then if the money's not right, it's like, I feel like I, I've been devalued. And that's hard for me to, 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 to kind of work with, right? And I get it. Like, it's not the artist's fault. It's just where I'm at in my life and how I, I work. This is why I work with churches and um, with weddings. Because with weddings, you know, we show up. It's like the same set over and over, right? And I know some musicians don't like that. And that's okay. But that's like the music business side of it. You're not always going to be playing what you like. And if you don't ask the thing, this is me. Like, this is how I feel about it. I like playing in church too, because a lot of the church music, um, it's we, we every three months, three, three to six months, we're playing the same stuff over and over. I know a lot of the sets. So, um, yeah, yeah. that's kind of my take on it. And then the, the balance side, um, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to take everything that, 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 that comes my way. And, um, I'm only going to really focus on mostly like 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 the niche that's kind of what i was talking about earlier like the the niche side of things um so it, the other thing i want to say about that um is um i also feel like if you are taking if i want to speak to like the younger crowd because i like you know they might hear me be like this dude's an old head and i probably am that's fine but to the younger crowd that is listening i want to say like you're young you don't have commitments take all take advantage of that and take every gig you can because once you get older you're not going to be wanting to be out there at the age of 40 playing like every gig, like five times a week. Like, you know, especially if at that point you're married and, and, and like you're really in it for, for, for bread and stuff like that. Um, so if you're young, take advantage of that because once you get old, um, it's a little different. Take every gig you can, like exhaust yourself uh, and your energy taking every gig you can when you're younger because when you get a little older it's going to change and, and you're going to you're going to want it you're going to want it to change because if you have a family and a wife and a kid and, and a wife and kids 
You're not going to be like, babe, it's Saturday. I got like a gig. It's like, that's challenging, you know? But that might be a season for certain people and there's nothing wrong. I also think it's for people to, and musicians to identify the season that they're in in their life to figure out, yo, you know, maybe you're struggling financially and playing a gig at the age of 35, 40. That might, there's nothing wrong with that if you're trying to make money with that. It's also identifying like the kind of lifestyle that you have. I found a way to balance personally. Um, my wife is totally cool with me um, working a lot. She doesn't have a problem with it. But I, before I was married, I was in other relationships with like, with, with, with a girl. She wanted me to be there all the time. Thank God I don't deal with that today, you know? So I, you have to identify the season you're in and where you're at in your life and then take it from there. And based on where you're trying to go and what your situation is, then you can figure out like, can you work a lot or can you not work a lot? And you know, you take it from there. Uh, another question here that I saw was, um, let me see. Oh no, there's no question. It was just uh, some people writing in, in the comment section. Javi said, I'll play September every set, bro. <laughs> Fact. I play September in church sometimes, bro. <laughs> uh, 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 what you call it? Daddy can tell you sometimes I'll be playing some like, <laughs> Some wedding grooves at church. I'm crazy like that. But um, nah, man, moving right along. Let's see. I had another couple of questions for you. <clears throat> we can continue. A any thoughts uh, you want to touch on or should I just jump in? Yeah, what you said was great. Um, you know, one thing you said was like, if, for the younger musicians, you know, take everything that you can. Um, absolutely true. You know, but don't, don't, don't burn any bridges at the same time. You know, I know a lot of, and I've had some conversations where they're like, you know, I called somebody, let's say, like, for a gig, and they said, oh, I have something, but don't worry, I'm going to get out of it, and I'll do it. And it's mm. like, hold on, you know, uh, you don't have to take this gig just because I called you for it, you know? Like, don't feel like you have to. And I, I, and I get the hustle and grind mentality, you know, you got to take everything that comes. It could be an opportunity that comes out of that. But there are some situations where you have to be a little bit, uh, I guess, use you know, think about it and be wise about, okay, am I going to call out last minute from a gig, a steady gig that I have all the time that that's, that's feeding me, you know, that's putting money in my pocket yeah. just to go into this one big gig or this one gig that I'm going to come right back. But I'm, but then I'm going to, I'm going to burn that bridge, you know, and then I'm going to do the band that keeps me steady, dirty, and then they have a bad reputation. They might not even want to call me back. Yeah. And so that's just one little thing, you know? Like, I agree. Because right, we talked about earlier, reputation is everything. Yeah, and choose choose your gigs wisely. But yeah, man, be hungry. Go and get it. Go get it. Do it all. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, another question I have, and um, I'll, I'll, I'll go into this question, and this will lead me into my... I'll go into the question, and this will lead me into my next question and some of the points I want to talk about, which is music directing. Marcos Roman said, um, <clears throat> here we go. As an MD, what would you say to musicians who can't or doesn't have time to make rehearsal for a gig that you know they can nail? I'm not sure what you mean by that. That you know they can nail or the rehearsal isn't paying. So as an MD, would you, let me repeat that. As an MD, what would you say to a musician who can't make or doesn't have time to make the rehearsal for a gig? Got any thoughts? Then, you want me to jump in? Uh, I'll jump in. I think yeah. That means, uh, Marcus, if 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 you're watching, you want to kind of react the second part. I didn't understand the second part of the question. So I guess I, we'll we'll touch we'll touch on the first part. As an MD, what would you say to a musician who can't or doesn't have time to make rehearsal for a gig? Uh, you got it. You want me to jump in? Go ahead, go ahead. And I think the second part of what he's saying is like. If that person can't make the gig, but you know that they can nail it, I think right. that's what he's saying. But right. the gig is pain, or, or or the rehearsal isn't pain, is what he's saying. Right. So, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I think that I think that it, it definitely depends on your situation, where Facts. you are, who you're working with. Um, but I think that communication is key in these situations. I think that you know, if this is something that was maybe brought up right up from the get. And you know you're able to work with it, um, or is then maybe you know you can make that arrangement with that person and say it's all right, you know, like let's you know, we'll we'll figure everything out. But if it's kind of like a last minute thing and the person isn't really communicating, then that's that's a little different. Um, yeah, 
I would say then that that's best be irresponsible. You know, I understand right. everything come up, last minute things, emergencies, it's all good. But at the same time, you know, you, you have a responsibility as a music director to 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 create this this music. You know, you need your whole band there. Um, so I would say yeah. like, if, if it's something that's brought up from the get, then it might be something worth working with and, and figuring out and maybe taking, you know, saying, okay, maybe not this rehearsal, but maybe the next one, you know, um, then, and if the rehearsal is in pain, then that's something that as an MD or as a, whoever's contacting these people should tell them from the, from the beginning. For sure. Communication. That, that, that would be my main answer for that. I think, and I want you to touch on this, Danny. I think what he's talking about too is, um, he's saying, hold on, tell me where you're going to leave. No, I know. Okay. Yeah, I'll definitely, the, the video is going to stay up, Marcus. Uh, the live stream will stay up. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll chop up sections of this and then we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll chop up certain parts, segments of this video, and then I'll make it into new videos on YouTube and that'll be up. But the live stream might go down in a few days, but I can leave it up for a bit if, if, if your people want to watch. But um, I think another thing I think another thing that he's touching on. I agree with you, Danny. That mm -hmm. um, if you are, hold well, on, I'll let you fix your camera. Do you think? Do you think you got it? Yeah, I'm just making sure my phone is charging. Okay. Um, I think what he was touching. I agree with you first. Let me just say that I agree with you that if uh, if your MD, your job is to like make the overall all thing work and communication is key and emergencies happen. But I think he's talking about is what is as an md what would you say to a musician who can't or doesn't have time to make the rehearsal like would you let them play or would you or, or would you not let them play as an md like are you a person that's like big on mandatory and i think some of this has to do with context too because if you're at a church i think that might be different from like a wedding gig right. and stuff like that so right. would you as an md would you let um someone play uh if they can't make the rehearsal uh my short answer yes okay i would and it, it might depend on the case to case though i agree i agree I, I was gonna say the same thing but short answer yes okay my thoughts on that i'll answer what i think about that i think it very similar to what danny's saying i think it, it depends on who it is um because let's say if i know uh, i'm if, if i'm music directing a gig right and I know, like, if it's a weak link, meaning it's someone that's not, like, in church, let, let's just use church. Let's say there's someone who's a weak link. Let's just use the a, a, a guitar player, let's just say, right? And he's not as strong in learning his parts. He tends to, it takes more time for him to learn the music. He's not always 100% sharp with certain things. Um, he, he comes prepared, but he's, his ability doesn't allow him to nail it. I might be like, yo, you know what, like, then maybe let's get someone else to play. And I think this also depends too on like the church because different, I, like I've, I've emptied at certain places and at certain places, um, different churches are a little bit strict about how they, um, how, like the culture of that. So I've been in churches where they're like, yo, if it, like, you know, if one person can't make it, then like they can't play or they can't sing that Sunday or they can't lead that Sunday. And I'm like, I think that might, there's time for that, but it just depends also on the culture and the vibe of the church um, and how strict they are about it. If it's a family emergency, like you said, I'm not like, you know, stuff like that happens, um, cool. But also like if I'm in a really tight, um, like, a, like a more strict type, um, type of situation, like I'm a, let's just say if I was on a, I've been in some wedding gigs that I, there's a musician, like there's a band uh, or, or, or an agent or an agency that's mad strict about like people showing up, then I'll be like, yo, bro, look, it, it might not make sense for, if you can't make rehearsal, don't because it's just gonna, you know, the vibe is gonna be weird and stuff like that. And I've been to other situations where the agency's like super chill and they're not so hands on and they're like, they, they don't get too involved into it. Then I'm like, yeah, you know what? It's no big deal. I just work with the people. Like, I, I agree with what you're saying. Um, and, and, and I'm aligned with what you, you said about, I think it just goes case by case. Right. Yeah, I definitely so that, those are my thoughts on that. Um, that being said, I want to talk about the, um, the, the music director stuff. Right. Um, so I've 
you know, we, we know a lot of musicians, but what is the job of a music director from your perspective? Because my perspective is I, I, I've talked to many musicians. I do certain, uh, many music directors. I've talked to music directors, but I do stuff a little different than other music directors, but that doesn't necessarily mean we don't get the job done. Um, so I want to know from your perspective, what are your thoughts on uh, what is a music director? What, what's the job of a music director? Music director's job is to connect the band. Let's say, let's, let's use a church setting, right? Yeah. Uh, to connect the band with, this, with the worship singers and make them sound as one. I love that. And th I think that that's, that's obviously just the number one goal, you know, and to, to communicate and to facilitate uh, music clearly to everybody. Yeah. Um, across the board, musicians and singers. Say um, that one more time to what? Hmm. To to communicate and to work efficiently across the board. Mm. Okay. And across the board, meaning musicians, singers, and to sound as one. And yeah. To sound together. It isn't an individual thing. It isn't a, you know, it isn't just the band sounding good and the singers. Now it's, it's a, it's a, it's a whole collective piece. So I think that's, that's the music director's job is to communicate that to every single person. I love it. <clears throat> is there a system that you use to MD? Meaning, like, um, there was a time when I first started music directing that I felt so overwhelmed. And I felt like I was getting instructions. I'm, and I'm talking about more from, from a church setting now, from, from a worship yeah. setting, right? Um, I was getting directions from, like, the pastor. Then I had to deal with the production stuff. Make, not necessarily deal with that, but, like, I had to work alongside with, with the production team, with the lights, and yeah. all that and then i felt like yo man like i'm not even doing music i'm not even like you know i felt like the job became something else and part of it was because i realized then and there i was like oh snap i'm not um i'm not coming in prepared and i'm not being like there was a lot of work i needed to do leading up to it right so then to, to leading up to the sunday or to the service that i was MDing, um and then i realized um i need to like you know kind of have like a list of things that i need to do um, and kind of prepare before I even show up. So, for example, um, make sure the planning center stuff is sent out a long time, like, you know, one, two weeks in advance. The way I like to do it is I like to to, to plan a month in advance. If I'm if I'm a, a MD, I like to plan everything. The next four Sundays, I like to plan it out. Um, so that's one thing, uh, making sure everyone's scheduled on planning center, not doing that stuff last minute. Um, making sure my I bring my in-ears. So is there like a list of things that you do or is there a system you use to MD? Or maybe you don't, maybe it's second nature to you at this point, but in the beginning uh, when you first started doing it. Yeah, there's definitely some parts that are like muscle memory or second nature. But um, I mean, yeah, I, I'd say that, that pre preparation is key. Communication is key. Um, you know, I, for me personally, you know, we try to get everything two, two weeks out, you know, two, three weeks out, it isn't always like that, things come up. Yeah, sure, but the goal is to always go two weeks out, you know, you're sending your messages early in the week, Monday, Tuesday. Mm. You're sending out to the, to, the, to the musicians and to the singers. Again, that's part of making sure everything is the, across the board, you know, everything is clear across the board. Um, it isn't just when you're up there playing, you know, it's also like you said, Josh, everything beforehand, you know, all the messages that get sent out and say, hey, look, this is happening. This is happening. Yeah. Bam, bam. Um, and so, yeah, tools are just like practical stuff, you know, getting things early in the week, doing them, getting things ahead of time. Um, you know, you, you're, you're setting up your Ableton session, your playback session, you're getting all that ready. Mm. Um, practicing with the Ableton and play or playback uh, set that you're creating for that week. Facts. Um, that is a practical thing that is super key. You know, you ha mm -hmm. you have to be, especially if you're running tracks and stems, right? Like, you should be proficient in what you're doing enough to be able to do things on the fly. Mm. Um, and practicing with. <laughs> 
Yeah. Say that again. Practice what? Practicing that is key. Like practicing with your play with whatever you're using to run stems. Oh yeah. Be able to session. Practice with that able to session. Practice looping sections. Practice doing certain things. Practice scenarios. You know, that's 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 those are tools that I do. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Okay. Um, here's another question I have for you, man. And this one um, is challenging, and, and I would love to hear from, from you and your perspective how you've dealt with this. But how do you deal with musicians who don't play pocket or follow your directions as a music director? Okay. Two things. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a, 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 let's say, a secular, not church place, right? Yeah, yeah. If you're the MD, you bring, you're creating the band, and you shouldn't have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> Why shouldn't they have that problem? Well, if you're creating the band, and you are the one that's making the calls for each, you know, you're, you're, you're handpicking the people you want. Um, does it happen here and there? Yeah, sure. Um, and so that's just like a little quick little, you know, funny thing there. Okay. But, um, if you're dealing with somebody like that, you know, the first thing you should do in any situation, let's say in a church setting or an outside setting, you should be building a rapport and a relationship with that person, right? Mm. Let's say if you're in church, right, and, and you're, you're dealing with somebody who's, who's overplaying. Before anything, before the stage, before playing, there should be a relationship there. There should be a, a, a trust there, right? Ah. And you should be, be creating that beforehand so that when there is any critique or there is any tweaking that needs to be done, um, it's gonna become it's gonna come from a safer place. It's gonna come from a more genuine and uh, place where you you just don't have to you don't have to worry about it being awkward or it being taken the wrong way if there's a report already made beforehand. I love that. Sela City oh. Church says hi. <laughs> they say, hey, <laughs> I love that. I love that. No, I agree, man. That That's great. So um, I like what you said, man. Um, you know, I think that the first thing you said, I want to drop a bomb for it. If you're in in a like a, in a non-church setting, if you're like in a, in, a, in a work with an agency or doing wedding gigs, you shouldn't deal with that problem. Why? Because you should know if you're a music director, you should know who you're calling. Right. If you're the and, director creating that band. Yeah, you know? exactly. So it's really on you. You should have not called that person. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and that, that's, that's totally on you. Um, but there is also, if I could just jump in real quick, Josh, there is also yeah. a situation where you don't have that privilege, but you're still the MD. Yeah, yeah. And, and that, that's what I was going to go to next. Ah, see, sorry. No, 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 go ahead. Continue, continue. So, so those situations are... are are tough, right? You may not even know the person. How many times you turn up to a gig, you don't know the drummer, you know? No. Nah. And so there, there's there's professionalism that needs to be done, and there's ways that you can approach those situations as well. Facts. There's ways that you approach that. There's rapport. Like I said, you know, when you're dealing with somebody, there should be a, a relationship and a rapport first so that when you have to critique. But that comes in, the, in those situations too. There's a rapport being built immediately when you meet that person in the gig yeah Take yeah two minutes to talk to that person that's facts that's a rapport right there and then when you when you bring it in i love know, that I, and i want to touch on that bomb on them it'll come from a nicer place yeah like, yeah spoke about. That's it. yeah i i gotta say bro i gotta say i gotta be honest like i see you lead and music direct at, at, at church and one thing I admire about you, bro, is that like you are great at building with people, building relationships, building rapport, what you're saying. So what you're saying, I'm hearing it and I'm like, yo, Danny does that great. Like he's a living testament to what he's talking about. So I love that. <clears throat> Pastor Frank Lorenzo said, my guys, Pastor Frank Lorenzo, shout out to Pastor Frank Lorenzo. <laughs> Frank Lorenzo in the house. We got a couple of people in here right now. We got Louis Burgos, Ron Sabara, shout out to... Those guys, all great musicians, all great people. I love it. I love it. No, I, I agree. What were we saying? Or I kind of lost thought. <laughs> Pastor, Pastor said, ha, 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 ha. Uh, yeah, no, I mean. About building rapport. Building rapport with people and friends. And, and, and musicians, I mean. Yeah. 
just yeah. things like you know how do you deal with these people and you you know how do you handle that and it, it's it starts immediately when you first meet that yeah person. yeah I would say, man, in, in a church setting, kind of to, 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 to talk a little bit more and elaborate on this, I would say in a church setting, man, <clears throat> if, you're, um, if you're a music director or worship, uh, worship leader or worship director, I want to say a big portion of, of your job is really building with people. Yeah. Um, exactly. Building with people. And I'll be honest, man, I feel like I could do better in that, you know. Um, sometimes I'm just so overwhelmed by all these other parts that go on that I'm like, whew, like tunnel vision. But I, you know, it's so important, and I feel like um, this is a reminder for me. Like, you gotta really build with people, and and like I said, you are one of the people that I've seen do that the best. So, shout oh, out you. to you, bro. Shout hey, out to you. I have good examples and good leaders at my church. <laughs> yeah, man. That's I agree. I agree, bro. I will say, Pastor Frank Lorenz is one of the uh, one of my favorite pastors, and I I, he, I, I would say he leads by example when it comes to that i totally agree man um and and you do have great uh examples to learn from at, at sela definitely <clears throat> let me see um let me ask what what piece of advice do you have and give to up-and-coming musicians and to that i want to add something else if you had to start all over again from day one and 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 and, and make it in the music business or Give a piece of advice that would, that got, like, what was the thing that got you the most success and you were starting again, what would you say? So what is the piece of advice you give to your up and coming musicians? And if you had to start all over again, what would you do? What would you do differently? Okay. Or what would you not do as well? Right, 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 right. <laughs> I would have overplayed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, okay, so up and coming musicians, you know, one thing that we said earlier, and you said it, Josh, actually, you said yeah. it. You're younger, take everything that you can, right? Which is which is a hundred percent true. But one thing I would also say is, and that, like I said, you know, be smart about your gigs. Don't burn a bridge just for a one-time, one-shot gig, right? Um, yeah. So that I, I would repeat that, you know, and say like, if you have something steady, you have something good for you, and it's going well. Don't just burn that bridge for a one-off, you know, one hit for this one artist, and you're gonna, you know, leave them hanging. You know, like things like that. Yeah. Um, but I would also say just trust the process. Mm. Um, everything comes at a time. Everything comes at the right time for you, right? And you may say, "Oh, you know, I've, I've been doing this for a little while. I haven't gotten these gigs. I haven't, you know, I'm not, I'm not making as much money as I want." But you know, like trust the process. Um, everything will come at its right time, you know. And you just, you just got to keep grinding. So. We live in a world where like everything is so easily accessible, right? Like, yeah. You want you want to take a whole lesson and you want to learn how to play this nasty lick? Look it up on YouTube. They're gonna tell you how to play a uh, uh, pen minor pentatonic, you know, or harmonic minor line. When back then you really had to sit and open a book. I got books here. You had to open it and read it and see and go. Mm, 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 you know what I mean? <laughs> so like things nowadays is so easily accessible. Yeah. With, in, in everything, right? This can go to like life. You know, you could, you can, you can date now. You know, on an app. You can online. Bible on an app. Like everything is just so easily accessible, and it could be that that can transcend into the younger people who are up and coming. Where it's like, I need this now. I want this now. But just just trust the process. I love it. I love it. <clears throat> um, um, for the, for those, real, real quick, real quick. For those that are tuning in, I've got some new people that came into the to the live. If you're not following, if you haven't liked, please hit the like, hit the subscribe. It helps the video. It helps the algorithm. Tap into the algorithm so that the video could be pushed and uh, this information and this community can continue to build and we can invite more people. There's a lot of people that Danny, myself, and some people that are in the chat, we know some phenomenal musicians and there's so much that could be extracted from those guys that can help the up and coming generation of musicians and music directors. Um, take their craft and, and their business to the next level. So hitting the like and the subscribe helps um, that this channel do that. So what were you saying, Danny? Uh, just, just alluding to your next question, which was, yeah. um, what would I do differently, right? Yeah, like, or what would you do or what would you not do, you know? Yeah. Think about that, bro. Think about that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. I would take advantage 
of certain things that I didn't take advantage of. Right? Mmm. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That I would take advantage of certain gigs that I didn't take advantage of. That I probably didn't think that I was good enough. Mmm. This is a yo, we gotta we gotta talk this because we towards the end, we about to wrap up, but this is a good convo, bro. This is yeah. a good a good thing to touch on. Yeah. So keep going, keep going. So you know, let's like though that's that's one thing where I was where I could say, okay, you know what, like, you know, I I, I don't think maybe this was, you know, a while back and I was like, I mean, I don't think that I'm I'm adequate for that just yet, you know. But then lo and behold, you know, let's say like uh, another situation and this is from what I learned from it, right? I, I said, I didn't think I was that good enough to do it yet. So I was like, you know what? No, I'm going to pass on this gig. Um, but then I, I, another opportunity came up where, yeah, I play bass, and, and bass is my number one instrument. But then I got called to play keys, and I was like, what? Like, who, what? You sure you called the right person? Mm -hmm. and, and it's something that I said yes to. And it's something that I'm that now I'm I'm actually still doing to this day is playing keys, and I was able to to grow that, you know. And had I said no, I probably wouldn't be a keys keyboard player pretty much, you know, mm. a keyboard player. But yeah, so that I would take advantage of some other opportunities that came around, um, because of potential things that could have come out of that. Yeah, um, that, I, that that's and, good, man. And, you know. There's other opportunities, you know. If, if you ever make a relationship with a person, especially let's say a heavy hitter with a musician, uh, heavy hitter musician, ooh, and they say, "Yeah, man, let's link up. Let's, you know, let's sit down and chop it up." Take advantage of that. Having conversations with those musicians who have conversations with those people, and if they say, "Yeah, no, let's get together. I'm down to link up," do it. Because yeah. you will greatly do it. like. I have had both where I didn't take advantage of it and I regret it and I have taken advantage of it and and it's, it's been it's to this day it's still amazing it's blessed me you know like I, I still hold it dear those those opportunities that I was able to just sit down with some great musicians and talk but also just show and learn yeah you you know what um I can relate man I can relate to that I felt like there was a season of my life when I first started playing music I did the comparison thing a lot, you know, I'd compare myself a lot, like, I'm not, oh, I'm not like this, I'm not like that person, or that, I don't play like this, and that kind of stopped me from doing gigs, and I relate so much to what you're saying, because I dealt with the exact same thing, like, I would compare myself, and I would get nervous on gigs, and come to find out, man, like, <clears throat> I don't mean this in a shady way, but then I saw other people doing gigs that I'm like, well, it was not even that good, I could have done it, but I was so stuck on what I was thinking, and my limitations, and my mindset, that I was like, now I can't do it. And then I remember I was super young, man, when I spoke to this dude. Um, I was doing a gig in Staten Island Church. Shout out to Tim Reyes, who, who called me to do a, a, a gig uh, at a church in Staten Island. I was so young, bro. I was like 18, 17 years old. And um, there was this guy named, a lot, a lot of us know him, Jamba. Uh, he, he was a producer, a uh, phenomenal keyboard player, singer, songwriter. And he was there, and we, like that's the first time I met him, and, and we were talking, and I, his his playing just blew my mind. He was such a phenomenal keyboard player, but more than anything, he was very tasteful, and his reharmonization on piano was just beautiful. And I, I I was talking to him, and I was like, bro, like what's one piece of advice you give me? And he told me something similar to what we're talking about. He's like, don't compare yourself to no one. Like don't play the comparison game. And that to me at that time was like. Phew. And then, like, I'm listening to what you're saying, and I'm, like, asking myself, like, why is it that musicians, we're so afraid, or sometimes we don't take gigs or take advantage of the opportunities? Um, what, 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 is it, what is it that you think? Is it, is it a mindset? Is it fear? Is it um, maybe yeah. just lack of preparation, or you feel like you haven't prepared enough that, that we kind of question ourselves and don't take advantage of certain things or certain situations at times? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's a good mix of that. Um, it's definitely, for me, it's definitely like a, a, almost like a fear of messing up, you know, and then, and then missing out on other gigs, you know, like, like we spoke earlier, reputation is key. Yeah. You know? Um, you want to be able to know, be known as, yeah, the person that shows up on time, the person that nails the gig, but the one that could also play, you know, and, yeah. you know, and you're only as good as your last gig, like a lot of people say, you know, and yeah, yeah. So I, I, 
I think it's just like that that fear and yeah, like just a comparison. comparison. Yeah. Um, one thing that uh, one last quick thing is yeah, please. I was younger, uh, playing, and somebody asked me, "Yo, man, so what's up? Like, how have you been?" And this was like a keyboard player, MD, and he was like, and I was like, "Yo, I'm good, man. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm gigging. I'm doing all." And he was like, "Nah, nah, nah, nah. don't tell me about being busy." He was like, "Are you being productive?" Hmm. He was like, "It's there's a lot of people busy." That are busy doing absolutely nothing, and then he was like, "How are how are you being productive? You know, be productive, not busy." And that has stuck with me, and I can't take credit for that. So that gunshot, <laughs> but that has stuck with me, right? Is to be brother productive. So that's something that I, if I were to go back, I would want to be more productive than busy. That's a fire word, bro. That that could be a sermon. <laughs> Real talk. <laughs> Sometimes we get caught up in being so busy and consumed with doing so much that we're not being productive and productivity and being busy are two completely different things. I, I totally agree um, with what you're saying. Um, yeah. Look, there's more people that are on the live that just tuning in that I'm seeing yeah. in the chat. Guys, if you guys have questions, um, anything you guys want us to touch on, um, <clears throat> please drop a, drop a message. We'll, we'll do our best to answer it. But um, yo, man, we're, uh, my boy Danny is talking some fire and, and I appreciate it. <laughs> Pastor, Pastor Frank Lorenzo said, movement is not progress. So true. Ooh. Yeah, man. So true. And, and that's why I, I, I like talking about the things we're talking about. Like, what is the job of a music director? What are the systems that music directors use? Um, how to deal with musicians uh, who, who, who can't play pocket or don't follow directions, which by the way, this is not shade to any of the experiences um, that I've had, I had, I'm not bringing these things up because I'm trying to throw shade at any situation. I'm really having these conversations because, um, the reality is there, there's no manual for music directing, right. you know? And in my experience, like I've worked with so many churches and like, I got to the point that I would, if I get a, a position at a church, I just ask, Hey, what are the expectations? What, like start asking the question. Cause like, then, like, I'd be thrown into, like, a, a, a whole situation that was muddy and that had a previous context and no one told me. And I'm like, yo, like, why are people mad at me? I know they come to find out months later it was because, like, the transition was bad or, or like, you know, they brought me in in a, in a situation that wasn't the best, so on and so forth. Um, and I didn't know how to handle these things. So this is why we're, we're having this conversation is to, is to help music directors or musicians uh, be their best in what they're doing, right? Especially if you're in church, we, we, we serve a God of excellence, a God of order. So uh, even more reason for us to have these conversations and provide value to musicians and, and to, um, to musicians and people who are, are, are music directors. Uh, any final thoughts, Danny, as we wrap up? That's, 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 that's great, honestly. You know, I, 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 one thought when you said certain things was... Yeah, let's flow, let's flow, bro. Okay, but the reality is everybody does a little bit more than what their job description does, says. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. Right, so it doesn't matter what job you get to, it doesn't matter where who you are, you're always going to do a little bit more than what your job description says. And I feel like that should be known. It's not, I'm not saying it's okay. I'm not saying you should be taken advantage of. Yeah. You should be ready to to just do a little bit more than what you're what you're normally. That's you're, facts. You're and that and I'm not saying again, I'm not saying that you should be taken advantage, you're gonna be yeah. in hours. But in any job, they're gonna say, here's what you do, and then when you get there, they're gonna say, Oh, by the way, here's a little something else, here's a little something else. This is the same thing with the music director. Right? Yeah, I agree. I think that um, you, you have to be willing to go the extra mile, the extra yeah, mile in, in the, in the position. And I'll be honest, man, I talk to musicians a lot. And then sometimes you'll find, um, certain people, certain musicians having a conversation of, you know, it, it coming off snobby, like, oh, I'm not going to do this unless it pays more. And it's like, well, if you're working in the church, let's say that that's not going to fly yeah. because yeah. like one, you're given a, a, like, what, what kind of a Christian are you? If you even are Christian guys, <laughs> you that they do Christian, right? <laughs> And then number two is like, <laughs> hit the hit the bomb for that one. <laughs> and then the number two is like, um, listen, if if a church is paying is paying you, man, like, 
I also want to let people know that's a big blessing, bro. That's a big blessing for, for a church to pay you and, 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 and to compensate you. And, you know, that, that's a whole nother question I'm not going to get into right now because we've been on this live for like over an hour, right? Should churches pay musicians? That's a whole nother conversation. We might need Pastor Frank Lorenzo on that one, right? But uh, that's a whole nother conversation. But like the fact that a church is hiring you and is compensating you to MD, man, especially if you're starting out, that's such a big blessing, number one. And number two, you should use that as 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 leverage that number one to 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 build off of that and gain 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 um reputation and experience. It's kind of like an internship. Look at it. I, I talk to a lot of young musicians that they're like, "Yo, it ain't paying this much." I'm like, "Dude, you're 20. Like, <laughs> you got no experience in the business like that. You shouldn't be asking for that much money. You lucky." There are dudes that I grew up with playing, man, that they hear that we get paid a certain amount of money. And that is mind blowing to them because there was a time where church wouldn't even pay musicians. Right. So if you are getting compensated, um, use that and, and, and use that moment and that experience and go the extra mile. Like Danny's saying, go the extra mile to build um, and, and, and learn your craft and to perfect your craft. Right. Because. Man, like I've I've been blessed to work with certain churches that are Grammy award winning churches, but I didn't get there overnight, you know. And because of because I have that church on my on my resume, bro, so many doors have opened, right? But if I look at all the experiences that got me there, right, and if you look at all the experiences that got you where you're at, right, it, it didn't start. It wasn't all perfect. It wasn't all like, yo, man, they're paying me X amount of dollars. That is a lot of money. It's like, nah, bro, like. It was really a struggle. I remember when I first started playing, I'd have to travel to like, first of all, when I first started playing and I started learning, I had to travel from, from, from New York. From, I lived in Queens at that time where there was no trains. I didn't live on the side of town where there was trains or anything like that. I didn't decide a town where there was no trains. It was like a 30 minute walk to the train and I'd go all the way to the Bronx just to get some keyboard lessons, some like really intense piano keyboard lessons with Adam Perez, right? And then with my boy Wesley Reynoso, right? I traveled two hours. I remember there was a time where I used to go to church and play in the Bronx for like a hundred bucks. Harvest Field, which you're familiar with Harvest Field, right? East Street, back in like early 2000s. I used to travel two and a half hours to get there. Yeah. And that, and I was getting a hundred bucks. And this is the time, like getting paid wasn't a thing. And now today it's like, yo, if I don't get paid, it's like, yo, dudes, dudes lose it. So... Um, yeah, man, we, we are in great times. I think, you know, and, and Marcos Roman was touching that uh, on that in, 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 in the chat. Like he was saying, like, you know, musicians have it a lot easier today because of YouTube and because of social media. And e I agree, like when it comes to marketing yourself, man, like musicians are able to get so many gigs. Just look at how the music industry um, is today. Like you got a guy like, let me just throw someone that's completely random right now, but like. Look at a guy like Takashi Six Nine, who's a rapper, right? And the only reason I'm aware is takes to be in that uh, hip hop world and production world. Dude became famous overnight because of social media, right? That's the power of social media. If you look at the lot of a lot of the artists that are, have made it today, they have leveraged social media to make it. This is why record labels got rid of all these A and R departments. They shrunk down into a small little office, and they don't really hire people to to go look for talent today because the talent is everywhere. It's on social media because of social media. So <clears throat> I, I really recommend, and I think that you're, you guys are touching on some great stuff. Um, yeah. But yeah, man, that's pretty much it. I don't know if you have anything final to say or you want to shout some people out, Danny. Oh, man, I don't know who's on, but um, no, Josh, thank you. Thank you for this. I mean, you know, like I said, I, I've, I've learned a lot and I'm nowhere near, you know, a lot of other people, but it's, I love talking and I love sharing. So. Absolutely. Ever. But this is literally our conversations like on the regular. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and there's there's more that's going to come, you know. There we I'm not even touching like on all the stuff we talk on. There's some of the stuff I definitely want to um one of the things that I want to do on this podcast is have um people that work with music directors and musicians and other music directors and other musicians on and just have rather than just being you and I have multiple people like it'll be great like for example if we had a pastor and a few music directors and have that conversation because that's another thing that I see man that is not happening there's a lot of uh, uh like I don't want to say back and forth but 
the communication. Tensions. Yeah, you said tensions? Yeah. Yeah, with pastors and music directors. And I feel like I don't feel that it's really that hard. Uh, but because sometimes we don't talk, we don't know. How, we might not even know how to ask the right questions and have a conversation, the dialogue. It's like it, it, it comes off a certain way. And I think that that, that situation just speaks broader to where our, our country's at. Um, we, we, we have a hard time like talking and, and listening to each other, right? And we make it so complicated. So I want to do those things on, on this podcast. He said, Javi, and look, check this out. Javi and then Mo is next. Moses Ventura, because Moses is on. Shout out to Moses Ventura, to Javi. <clears throat> uh, Pastor Frank Lorenzo is saying, just FYI, both Danny and Josh, aside from being great musicians, have great hearts for ministry. Yeah, man. Um, I don't want to say I double that because like I'm talking about myself. But I think what he's get what Pastor Frank Lorenzo was touching on is you need to have a heart for ministry, man. Um, and he's not directly saying that. He's just speaking that about us. But I'm saying whoever is listening to this, you cannot be in ministry and not have a heart for ministry. And I will say ministry is not easy. You know, you have to also identify if it's for you, you know. And this is why sometimes churches don't put all musicians on staff because Ministry is not for everyone. You're just a contractor. You're just a stipend person. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, so I definitely want to have more of these conversations. Shout out to everyone who's in the chat, man. I don't want to leave this because it's such a good conversation. So many good people. But we've been on for an hour and a half. Um, Amy Munoz says, it's a calling, a greed pastor. Yes, it is a calling. You have to be able to identify. Any final thoughts in the chat? Any last question before we leave? This is crazy. I'm realizing that Ecamm gives me the option to ban the comments or ban a person. That's crazy. <laughs> Don't say anything crazy. I'll ban you. No, I'm kidding. I won't ban no one. <laughs> um, any final thoughts, people in the chat? Um, any donations want to be sent to Danny? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> At some point, I'm going to start asking for donations. That's, that's... He says, Shama. We got some Pentecostals in the house. Shout out to the Pentecostals. Yes, Pastor Josh, uh, Pastor, Pastor Josh, wow. Pastor Frank Lorenzo said, Josh got to go feed his newborn now. That's a fact. Well, he's already sleeping, so. <laughs> he does eat a lot, though. But, um, yeah, man, I'm excited. Yo, Danny, thanks once again for, have, for, uh, for allowing yourself to be on. Thanks for, for coming on, bro. I appreciate you. I love you, bro. And I, I, I want to say before I leave, like, man, I really, um, lately we've been working together and um, I'm, I'm really honored to work with you. Um, I agree with what Pastor Lorenzo said. You definitely have a heart for ministry, and you um, you exemplify great leadership, bro, and, and great people skills. And I I personally, I'm like, man, I got to learn from that dude. I tell my wife, I'm like, yo, I got to learn from this dude. He's, like, great with people. And I'm like, I feel bad, bro. I'm like, man, I haven't been the great. Like, not that I've done anything bad, but you just, like, you set the standard for it, bro. And I'm like, yo, that that's amazing, bro. So I honor you, bro, and, and thanks for coming on. This will not be the last time. I'm, I'm looking forward to having... Um, other music directors on and, and have like a whole panel virtually man and, and just shed knowledge and, and spread information on this stuff and hopefully we can even um you know cross paths with other people music directors and pastors pastors and and, and and music directors worship directors but yeah man that being said bro i'm gonna let you do your thing bro rock and roll um thanks for being on bro i love you peace out people thanks for being on and and, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't to peace yes.